Good morning, boys and girls. It's good to be here with you again another Sunday. We're uh, always, as always, grateful to God for uh, the privilege and the opportunity to gather and to uh, sing and to pray and to study God's Word. And I hope you're excited to be able to gather uh, with me this morning and to do those very things. Um, uh, just a reminder uh, to you and to the parents, um, uh, we have all of the lesson materials and the, uh, the music, the lyrics up on uh, the website and uh, for you to be able to access. Um, there's also uh, all that is accessible even through the new uh, Timberlake Baptist Church app. If you go to the Invest uh, Children's Ministry uh, page on the app, uh, you can find directly right on there um, all the uh, the materials, or, or even I think it's actually under the resources uh, for uh, for the church. The resources you can find uh, all the curriculum uh, for this week, um, and uh, they can print off all the coloring sheets, the activities, and uh, and the lesson to go over even at home. Uh, there's also a video with um, uh, the lesson uh, that you can watch as well. So hopefully you guys are taking advantage of that and uh, doing that at home. And um, I'd love to be able to um, hear from you guys to see if uh, you've been enjoying that as well as the live streams. And uh, it's been a blessing to me to be able to continue to teach you in this way. Um, but anyways, uh, let's do what I say is always most important to start with. And let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads. Let's quiet our lips. And let's pray and ask God to bless our time together, okay? All right. Father, thank you for... Uh, this uh, wonderful day. Um, every day is a day that we can rejoice and be glad because you are our King, you are our God. And uh, Lord, no matter our circumstances, we are to rejoice and give thanks. Um, we uh, have been showed great kindness by you. And um, uh, honestly, there are no circumstances in which we should um, turn away and not reflect upon the very truths that your scripture teaches, um, and that is that you are good and you are kind to us. You provide us salvation. You provide us forgiveness of sins that go against every part of your being, every part of your character. You are holy. You are just and righteous, but Father, we are sinful and we need you to be our Savior, and you have provided that for us so that we could be reconcile to you. Help us, Lord, uh, even now as we sing and as we study your word, help us to, um, to focus upon you, to not be distracted by other things, and definitely help us to not be a distraction to others, I pray. Uh, we love you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, well, we are going to uh, go back to uh, a song that um, that we learned together in the very beginning, um, Jesus Strong and Kind. Um, this song we've are even started singing in church uh, together, and uh, I'm excited to continue to sing this with you. And it's just a constant reminder of the goodness of, of God, the goodness of His Son, Jesus Christ, and uh, reasons why we can trust Him and know Him. And so uh, let's sing this together. You guys do that so well, and I'm I'm excited to be able to sing with you in this song again this morning. Jesus said that if I thirst, I should come to him. No one else can satisfy, I should come to him. Jesus said, if I am weak, I should come to him. No one else can be my strength, I should come to him. For the Lord is good and faithful, he will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. Jesus said that if I fear, 
I should come to him. No one else can be my shield. I should come to him. For the Lord is good and faithful. He will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. Jesus said, if I am lost, he will come to me. And he showed me on that cross, he will come to me for the Lord is good and faithful he will keep us day and night we can always run to Jesus Jesus strong and kind for the Lord is good and faithful he will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. Jesus strong and kind. Sing this with me too. You guys know this song well. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. The little ones to Him belong, they are weak, but He is strong. Yes, I love Jesus, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. I love Jesus, does he know? Have I ever told him so? Jesus loves to hear me pray that I love him every day. Yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus. In prayer I tell him so. All right, good singing, boys and girls. Um, we are going to do what I said earlier, and we are going to open up our Bibles and dive into God's Word uh, together. Uh, we are going to be in 1 Kings chapter 19 this morning. Um, God has provided us with um, yet another uh, story that reminds us of His goodness and reminds us of, of His care and protection and just even more of the attributes of, of His character, of who He is and what He is like. And you know, that's what the Bible does. It tells us what God is like. It tells us who He is. It tells us who we are in light of who He is as well. And not only that, but it tells us how we can become more like Him. And boys and girls, He has provided a way for us to be like Him so that we could spend eternity with Him together. You know, we are all sinful, and we deserve to be separated from God, and we deserve His just wrath and judgment. But God is good and gracious, and He is a wonderful King that desires to have us follow Him and to be like Him. And He provides us that, that way. He provides us that truth, and we're even going to talk about that this morning. But in 1 Kings chapter 19, we're just coming out of a story uh, from last week, a story from history where there was a man named 
Can you remember? Elijah. Elijah, yeah. And if you remember our Bible story from last week, God used Elijah to do something amazing. God sent fire from the sky to burn up uh, the altar that Elijah had built. And do you remember something about the altar that was significant? Right, the, the altar was made out of soaking wet wood. It was made out of soaking wet uh, materials. He had poured water upon it because he wanted to show the people that followed after Baal that there was only one true God. And that only one true God could destroy and consume this altar in the way they, uh, that he said they could. Because those false gods that the, uh, the priests were trying to lead and direct the people to worship, they were not real. They were false. They were not real. They couldn't consume anything. They would not send fire down. No matter how um, earnest and, and how sincere the people were worshiping, even if they hurt themselves and, 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 and defiled themselves in order to make these gods respond, God in His goodness, Yahweh, the one that Elijah worshipped, the prophet that uh, the prophet Elijah had told them, this is the only true God. Do you remember what happened? Elijah cried unto the Father and said, God, show them who you are. Consume this altar with the fire that you would rain down. And it came down, not only destroying the wood, but it destroyed the rubble all around. It even destroyed the dust that was very, the, the very dust that was there. And Elijah was probably really happy that God defeated the prophets of Baal. But in today's Bible story, boys and girls, Elijah was far from happy. Elijah was far from happy. And let's find out why, okay? So remember I said 1 Kings chapter 19. The prophet Elijah had just witnessed this great miracle that uh, great display of God's power over the false god, Baal. And God had sent fire from heaven and it ended a long drought with a great rain. Now, Elijah must have felt a sense of victory. The evil king Ahab could not deny the one true God. But trouble awaited Elijah in the form of Ahab's wife, Jezebel. You know, you've probably heard that name before, and uh, obviously we, we've talked about uh, King Ahab, and uh, it was really leading down to his wife was going to be the real problem. And Elijah must have felt victory, but now he was beginning to see there was something more going on here, and he was going to be fearful here shortly. Because when Jezebel heard what happened at Mount Carmel, where Elijah stood up and, es and essentially, not Elijah, but God made a fool out of the followers of Baal. She threatened to kill Elijah. Elijah was a prophet. He was there to speak for God. He was there to lead the people to the one true God and to tell them to repent and turn to the one true God. And she didn't like that. And she says, I am going to kill Elijah. I want him dead. Elijah ran away as a result because he was scared and he hid in the wilderness. Now what a change Elijah experienced. He went from a man faithfully, confidently praying for God's glory to be displayed at Mount Carmel to a man begging the Lord to take away his life. It says that. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4, it says, But he went on a day's journey into the wilderness. He sat down under a broom tree and prayed that he might die. He said, I have had enough. Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. He was so afraid. He was so uh, afraid, fearing his, for his own life, uh, fearing uh, for what had taken place. 
But let's read about this in 1 Kings chapter 19, boys and girls. We find out what God is like from the Bible, right? Remember, I said that just a little while ago. We find out what God is like from the Bible because the Bible is God's Word. Now, all God's words are true, right? Yeah. Well, here we are going to read even more about God. We are going to learn more about God in our story today. Elijah's fear of Jezebel seems silly, you know, because he was so scared here. After God showed Elijah his great power and displayed by defeating the prophets of Baal, but God did not think Elijah was silly for being afraid. God encouraged Elijah. Did you know that? God encouraged Elijah. Let's, let's read about that, okay? So, Elijah, I mean, uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1. Ahab told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done, how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, May the gods punish you, or punish me, and do so severely if I don't make your life like the life of the one of them by this time tomorrow. Then Elijah became afraid and immediately ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba that belonged to Judah, he left his servant there. Verse 4, But he went on a day's journey into the wilderness. He sat down under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might die. He said, I have had enough. Lord, take my life, for I know better than my father's. Then he laid down and he slept under the broom tree. Suddenly, an angel touched him, and the angel told him, Get up and eat. Then he looked, and there at his head was a loaf of bread, baked over hot stones and a jug of water. So he ate, and he drank, and he lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord, the angel of Yahweh, returned for a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, or the journey will be too much for you. So he got up, and he ate, and he drank. Then on the strength from that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. He entered a cave there and spent the night. Boys and girls, did you hear what happened? The angel of the Lord came to, to Elijah and said, Listen, eat and drink. It was freshly baked bread. It was, he was uh, quenching thirst, uh, thirst quenching water here. And he said, eat and drink. And he did. And then Elijah fell back to sleep. And then the angel woke him up again and said, listen, you need to eat because the journey that you're about to take, you need the strength to make this journey. And so it says that he ate and he drank. And then on the strength that, was, that came from that, that's what it says. It says he ate up, he got up, he ate, and he drank, and and then on the strength from that food by which he ate, he walked forty days and forty nights. Can you imagine walking straight for forty days and forty nights? And he did it on that uh, by the strength from that bread and that water, and then suddenly. The word of the Lord came to him and said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of armies, but the Israelites have abandoned your covenant, torn down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are looking for me to take my life. He was still, still fearing Jezebel. Verse 11. Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the Lord's presence. At that moment, the Lord passed by. A great and mighty wind was tearing at the mountains and was shattering cliffs before the Lord. But the Lord, that's Yahweh, was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, what was it? 
It was a voice. It was it a loud, booming voice. It was a soft whisper. Boys and girls, look at the process here. Look at, look at the progression. It says, there was a mighty wind that came through and it shattered and it ripped off the cliffs. And then it, there was not after there was after this wind there was an earthquake that shattered that that um, that was awful and terrible. It says, but the Lord was not in it. And then there was a fire, and the fire was consuming. But the Lord was not in the fire. But then there was a voice, a soft voice, a soft whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? I have been very zealous for the Lord, God of armies, he replied, but the Israelites have abandoned your covenant, torn down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword. I am I alone and left, and they're looking for me to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go and return by the way you came to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you are to anoint Hazael as king over Aram. You are to anoint Yehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Amola, as prophet in your place. Then Ye Jehu will put to death whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death whoever escapes the sword of Jehu. But I will leave. 7,000 in Israel, every knee that has not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Boys and girls, God came and spoke to Elijah. God came and encouraged Elijah. He came and he encouraged Elijah. You see, he came and he spoke to Elijah. There was wind. There was an earthquake. There was fire. But then there was a soft whisper. If you think back, you think back in the progression there. Think back even to what Elijah experienced in, in um, 1 Kings chapter 18. God was a consuming fire that came down and destroyed the altar. And then all of a sudden there's this massive wind. There's a massive earthquake and massive fire, yet God wasn't in those things. And then he was in the soft whisper. He was in the soft whisper. And God encouraged Elijah. He encouraged Elijah in that. God did not think Elijah was silly for being afraid. God encouraged Elijah. God knew Elijah needed to rest. He knew that he needed to eat and to know God was still working his good plan. You know, there are times in our lives where we start to doubt. We start to fear because things are coming against us. In the days in which we live right now, there are uncertain times. And we have to be careful about how we think. We have to be careful about how we respond. Boys and girls, that's where what we believe and know about God comes into play. It is so important that we know who God is. It is so important that we know about His character because if God says who He is in His Word, we can trust it. And what we trust and believe in will affect our lives, will impact our lives and how we respond to the circumstances of our days. Maybe we can't go to church because the government is putting restrictions upon us. Maybe we can't go to church because there's this fear of, an, of a plague or a pandemic or an epidemic or disease of some sort. And they're saying, be scared, be afraid. But we can also trust the Lord and trust that He is good and kind. Even in times that are sorrow, there's great sorrow, even when we are being attacked, even when we're, things are uncertain, uncertain, 
we can trust the Lord and His goodness. And He will encourage us. He will encourage us just like He did Elijah. He didn't think it was afraid. Or he didn't think, God didn't think it was silly for Elijah to be afraid. You know, that's one thing that we have to be careful with is, is, um, is just kind of scoffing at people when they are scared or afraid. Be like, there's nothing to be scared of. There's nothing to be afraid of. No, we must be like God and we should be gentle and merciful. We should be uh, sympathetic with them. We should encourage them. We should pray with them. We should love them. God didn't think it was silly. He, he encouraged Elijah. He said, get some rest. Here's some food. You need strength. Know that God is still in control and working out his plan. God was merciful to Elijah. An angel of the Lord brought Elijah food. He brought him drink. He told him to rest. And, and then he traveled him uh, all the way to Mount Horeb for a personal encounter with God. And in a scary time where there's wind and there's earthquakes and there's fire, God came to him in a gentle whisper. This was a familiar place in the history of Israel. Horeb was another name for Mount Sinai. It was the place where God gave the Ten Commandments to the Israelites and where Moses met with God. He knew God knew that Elijah needed this and he would give him exactly what he needed to encourage him to go back and to set up what, the, what Israel needed to be in that moment. He says, I need you to anoint these people. I need you to get them in order to do my will, to do my work. And after the events in 1 Kings 18, Elijah might have expected a grand display of God's presence but what he experienced was just the opposite. The Lord was not in the wind. The Lord was not in the earthquake. He was not in the fire. But he came and revealed himself to Elijah in a soft, soft whisper. In last week's lesson, God showed himself to be all-powerful, to be consuming. But in today's lesson, he showed himself to be kind and gentle. Isn't that so good to, to learn about the character of God? How one moment he is all powerful, he is able to control everything and, and really able to, to destroy things, to consume things in a, in a way that no one else, nothing else can do. And yet all the while he can also be gentle and caring and kind. Elijah's circumstances were difficult, but God didn't leave him, boys and girls. God didn't leave Elijah. God gave him Elisha, a friend and a successor. God assured Elijah that he was not alone, that there were 7,000 people in Israel who had not turned to worship Baal. God's prophets suffered, but their lives and their messages pointed toward the ultimate prophet that would come. Boys and girls, God is about judgment. God is about justice. He is about making sure that glory is His and He will share it with no other. But God is also about the business of making sure that people will understand that they are His and that He will care for them. He will encourage them and protect them to the end. He will fulfill his promises, even to the point of reminding them that there is a prophet that will come that is greater than all. There is a prophet who will also be priest and will be king, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus suffered for the sins of this world, and Jesus suffered greatly. And Jesus was hated, he was killed, but his death and his resurrection brought victory for God's people. He suffered, but he was used for the glory of God and for himself. And God would give him that victory. And God in one day will give him his bride, the church, and say, this is who 
you, you bought. This is who you won. This is your victory. And boys and girls, what have we learned in the last two weeks? How many gods are there? How many gods are there? There is one true God. There is one true God. Jezebel did not want people to worship the one true God. In fact, she wanted to hurt Elijah because he worshiped God. And Elijah's life reminds us of Jesus, the greatest prophet. And Jesus was hated and he was killed because he is God's son. He is God's son. He was the greatest prophet. And the world wants to tell us that there are so many other ways for eternal life, for happiness, for joy. But there is only one true God, one that we should follow. Let's remind ourselves of the, of the verse that we were learning as well. Long ago, God spoke by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. That son is Jesus Christ, boys and girls. And in Jesus Christ, we have the fullness of God on display. We have the fullness of, of the picture of God's redemption, redeeming his people from their sins, bringing us back into the order in which God intended in the very beginning. We must trust Him, turn our lives to Him. Why would we not? He is in control over all these things. These characteristics that we are learning about God are also of His Son, Jesus Christ, who is the perfect prophet, the one that would come. He's not only the perfect prophet, but He's also the perfect priest and the perfect king, and He will rule and reign forever. That's why we sing that song, Jesus, strong and kind. We don't have anything to fear, but we only have one in which we can trust, and that is Jesus. I pray that you will, that you will trust him with your life, that you will ask God to forgive you of your sins, and that you would bank that upon what Jesus did for you, not because of anything that you can do. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the kindness to allow us to study about you and to make yourself known to us. I pray that you would help these children to study, to show themselves approved, a workman not ashamed. I pray that you would help them to, to know your word because it tells us of, of who you are. And it would give them truth to hold as a foundation of their lives that they would not be swayed by every wind of doctrine that they would not be tossed to and fro, Lord, as your scripture tells us. They would not be uh, mistaken, um, mistaking things in this world that are false, that are untrue, and that lead them away from the truth, Lord. Thank you for the kindness of displaying your very self, not only in the powerful, mighty ways, but also in the whispers, the gentleness, the kindness. Help us, Lord, to trust you more this week. Help us to trust you when we begin to doubt and fear. May we not think that it's silly, but may we trust you, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, boys and girls, I pray that you'll have a wonderful rest of your week and that um, uh, you'll um, continue to study his word and depend upon the Lord uh, for all things that come in this life. And trust him to be uh, the God that cares and loves for you, or loves you. And uh, I'll be praying for you, and I love you, and look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.